Hey guys, Greg Beast here. Uh, the Beast Lab is currently under renovation, hopefully being upgraded. So I have brought you upstairs and we're going to work on something a little bit different. I've been getting a lot of questions over the years about a training program that's specific for base off guys, um, you know, helping people gain weight, helping people do this, do that. I was a strength coach for years. I owned a company called Brolic Strength. Um, so this is a passion of mine. However, um, I don't want to get caught up in two things. One, I think it's very irresponsible for someone to just give you a, a weightlifting program, especially if there's no evaluation, if I have no idea of what your uh, weaknesses are or your strengths, maybe you don't have the flexibility to do a deep squat. So I can't give you a program. Um, I also want to stay away from this whole myth of sports-specific strength training. Every athlete, soccer, swimming, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, can benefit from the same core lifts. Now the difference then deviates to skill specific training. So we'll talk about that a little bit on how you can just tweak something simple. So basically what I wanted to do was instead of just give you a flat program or say, hey, this is what works for me. Um, over the years, I tried a ton of different things and I found that a specific type of periodization works great, especially for face off guys. Um, because for us, we have to train essentially the way a linebacker or a safety would train in football. We just have to be great athletes. Uh, flexibility, power, strength, muscular endurance. We don't have to focus on a million different forearm exercises or get too you know, thought processed into this. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you what I did for years that I found from a scientific standpoint really benefited all of my clients and athletes that I trained with. It's a system called conjugate periodization. Now, linear periodization was always designed to, basically you had certain exercises and you would increase over time and you would just develop. The problem is, is there's two limiting factors. One, some people, they stay on the same program for a really long time and then your body adapts. So when you think of adaptation, all right, dinosaurs or monkeys or people eventually, like if we last that long, everything evolves. So it, it basically, the evolution happens over the course of millions of years um, for different animals and species like that so they can survive. Basically, all weight training is, is a microcosm of that. So essentially, if I give your body, say I give your quads some kind of stress every single day, and over time, your quads develop a, 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 a adaptation to that stress. So if they're gonna do squats every single day, yeah, forget about your knees and hips and everything starting to hurt after a while, but your quads will eventually get thicker, they'll get stronger, they'll get bigger because they need to adapt to that stress. Your body has no idea you're working out with weights. For all your body knows, you're running away from a leopard. You know, they have no idea. But what they are doing is they're adapting so you can survive. And basically all strength training is in a nutshell is tricking your body into adaptation so that it believes that it has to get bigger, it has to get stronger, it has to increase its cardio base in order to survive. So that's all strength training is in a nutshell. So the other limiting factor that I've seen is people will do something that, you know, I guess they call it body confusion, right? I gotta trick the body. I gotta do something different every single day. Same thing, you're gonna eventually plateau. And here's why. Think of it this way. If I did math one day a month, I did English one day a month, then I did social studies one day a month, and that's how I learned. I did something completely different every single day. I would never actually interpret that information and learn it. So if I did something completely different and I tricked my body every single day by doing a random workout that it didn't understand what was happening, there's no adaptation. So that means I can't actually progress. The key to any consistent strength training program is some kind of progression, some kind of measurable progression. So what I did was I took three training days and I believe very heavily that you should be doing total body. I don't think, unless you can play lacrosse or face off with just your legs on a Tuesday or just your chest on a Monday, until someone can prove to me they can do that, you shouldn't be doing that, all right? Um, doing 30 sets of chest on a Monday immediately now makes you imbalanced for the rest of the week. So you better get your back in there. You better get your legs in there. You better get your quads, your dominant, your posterior dominant, all that stuff. If you miss a day of your lift in that week, you are now immediately imbalanced. Um, and also, the key to being bigger and stronger is frequency. So as much as we make fun of the guys who do arms every single day in the gym, their arms are gonna get bigger. Um, at some point, they'll burn out, but their arms will get bigger because they're frequently hitting it. So what I found was, if I did total bot, 
three days a week. And then I just rotated the set and rep schemes for the amount of volume that I was hitting. We can train multiple different levels of things. So what I'm going to show you right now is a conjugate periodization scheme. We have three different cycles. A macro cycle, which is 12 months, it's a year. That's, that's my macro cycle. Then we take those macro cycles and we put them into quarters. Each quarter is three months. Okay, That is called a mesocycle. Then we take that mesocycle and it's broken down into four weeks, which is a month, obviously. And those four weeks are now micro cycles. So you have a micro cycle, which is a week, a mesocycle, which is three months, and a macro cycle, which is now an entire year. So what I'm going to show you here is a plug and play. It's a very basic idea of how you can create your own system. And if you create your own training program using this method, you can easily write an entire macro cycle in which you will develop from January all the way to December. Okay? So let me show you. We're going to spin it around here. Pay attention. You might want to get your notebook out. Okay? If you take this seriously. If not, then I don't know why you're watching this. Okay. So first, look up at the top. These are the categories that I break stuff down in. Okay? I don't break it down by chest or back or... I break it down by movement, okay, and space. So, quad dominant, meaning an anterior load. Quads, okay, squat variations. So, underneath our quad dominant exercises, our anterior dominant exercises, we have barbell squat. You can do it with a back squat. You can do it front squat, okay. Goblet squat, where we hold the dumbbell. You're going to want to Google all this stuff. And then split squat. A split squat, you can stand in a lunge and drop your knee, or you can put your back leg up on a bench and go Bulgarian style. But either way, you have your quad dominant. Then we go to posterior dominant. So this hits the posterior chain, which is basically from your heels all the way up your backside. Okay, the deadlift is the standard, okay, for that. RDL is another variation of deadlift, Romanian deadlift. Okay, slight bend in the knees. You're gonna hip hinge and push your butt back so that you're really focusing on the hamstrings and glutes. Um, and then the glute ham raise, which I think is an underused exercise that should be used a lot. So I'm just putting up my favorites. You don't have to go by this, but these are my favorites that I think that every person should be having in their system. Then we go to pushes. Okay, so a vertical push overhead or a horizontal push like a bench press or something. So we have bench press. You can do that with a dumbbell or a barbell. Push press, one same thing. You can do it with a barbell or dumbbells. It's up to you. And then we have push-ups, okay, which obviously are a staple for most people. Then we go to our pulls, bent over row, okay, bent at a 90 degree angle. You can either go supinated or pronated on the barbell, bring it straight up. Okay, I like that exercise because you are engaging your entire posterior chain while you're working your upper back. Face pulls, which is a high variation. You're pulling your hands up to your face and then your pull-ups, okay? Now, pull-ups are great. They're one of the best muscle building exercises, especially for your biceps, you actually, if you're doing heavy loaded ones with a chain around your waist, you're actually going to feel it in your abdominals if you do it right. Um, be careful with pull-ups though because your lats are also an internal rotator. So people who just do pull-ups and push-ups end up rounding their shoulders. So make sure you got a lot of horizontal pull. Don't overdo it on the pull-ups, okay? And plus your dress shirts will start to fit weird, all right? Um, that's not our goal at the end of the day, okay? And then conditioning. So with conditioning at the end, if we're going to be an athlete, we don't want to just be these bulky idiots who can't run around and have no cardio base. So I have sled pushes and pulls, kettlebell swings, which are fantastic, uh, and your treadmill sprints. Okay, If you want to put it at an incline, your treadmill sprint will now be a little bit harder and it'll work more on your hamstrings and your glutes. And then uh, what I call weakness training. So basically our weakness training is an, ad is an additive. So if you're going to work on something, say you want bigger biceps, you would do biceps every workout. At the end, you would just trash your biceps, do some gun shop, whatever. Um, low back and flexibility and rotator cuff are what I focus on because these are the limiting factors for face-off guys. So if you're a face-off guy watching this, think about it. Have you ever had a low back issue? Have you ever had a um, rotator cuff issue or a wrist issue? Okay, These are the times where we use prehab and rehab to work on these issues. I stretch all the time. I spend 15 to 20 minutes stretching at the end of all my exercise, all my training. On my days off, I'll do a light cardio to loosen up, and then I'll stretch for about 45 minutes. Um, flexibility, in my opinion, is the most important thing because it gives you longevity, helps you stave off injuries. We're going to get injured a lot as face-off guys, but if you can flex, if you can be flexible and mobile, 
then you're going to stave off a lot of injuries that could have happened. All right. So now we've got our exercises, our basic exercises. You can always feel free to add stuff or take away, do some research on something that you might like better. But this is the basics. Now, we're going to go three days a week because if you go every day of the week, you're never going to rest. Here's the misconception that you grow when you're lifting. You don't grow when you're lifting. You grow when you're resting. Okay. So if you have three days a week that you can really blow it out and go really hard, your body will then rest the next day and you'll grow. If you just kind of putz around every single day and do some kind of stupid exercise every single day, uh, your body's not going to grow because you're not really taking the time. Remember, this is about effort, not how long you, you train. So if you train every single day and it's just a crappy workout, that's not going to do anything compared to really killing yourself Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right. So say we got day one, day two, and day three. All right. So I know obviously this is written a little bit tight. So just pay attention. I'm going to try and make it a sense of it. So look at just day one. We're going to take day one and all we're going to do is plug and play. We're going to take a back squat. We're going to add a deadlift. We're going to add bench, bent over row. Now, those exercises will be part of our rep set scheme, okay? So remember those. Then, at the end, we'll plug in some rotator cuff work and some sled work for conditioning at the end. That's an entire day's training right there. Now, what are your goals? I have found that three set rep schemes work really, really well. 10 by 3, which may sound crazy, but think about this. If I do three sets of 10, that's great. That's 30 total reps. But when I do those 30 total reps... Maybe I can only do 40 pounds of something, right? Say I'm doing bench press with a dumbbell. I can only do 40 pounds for 10 reps for three sets. But if I do 10 sets of three, I might be able to do 60 pounds for three reps at a time. But then when I'm done those sets, I still did 30 total reps. So that means I hit a volume of 30 reps, but I did it with exponentially more weight, which means my body will progress a lot faster, okay? Now... 10 sets of three will be our, our power day, okay? You're gonna hit that as hard as you can. Boom, 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 okay? Three reps at a time. Do your back squat, then deadlift, then bench, then bend over row, okay? Now, at the end, rotator cuff and sled are boxed because you can do those for, I would recommend two sets of 15 for rotator cuff or three sets of 10, something light, okay? If you're doing a weakness training or you wanna work on a rotator, a rotator cuff muscle, you don't want to kill yourself with this. Don't make it a heavy weight because then you can't do it right. Um, and then the sled's up to you. You know, pick depending on how much how much weight uh, weight you're using, how much distance you're using. If you're doing like a 30 meter track, maybe you'll say, okay, I'll do three three laps with the sled, whatever. Okay. But this is day one, and we're going to do it 10 sets of three. All right. Now this 10 sets of three represents our first uh, cycle, our first micro cycle, which is going to be three weeks. Okay, so for three weeks, we're going to do 10 sets of three on Monday of these exercises. Okay, now on day two, we plug and play again. We grab the second row, goblet squat, RDL, push press, face pull, throw it in there. Then we decide that we're going to do our weakness training and our kettlebell swings. So we have our conditioning and our weakness, kettlebell swings and low back, throw it in there. Okay, now the second day of the week, we're going to do five by five. That's going to be our strength day. So we focused on our power, 10 sets of three. Then we're focusing on our strength, five by five. All right. Now, on day three, we're going to do the final row. Split squat, glute ham, push up, pull up, and tread treadmill sprints, and we're going to stretch. Okay? So we're going to work on our flexibility. Now, that final day of the week is going to be muscular endurance, two sets of 20. All right? So now, we have three days built into the calendar. We're doing total body every single day. We have perfect symmetry because we're doing a push, a pull, quad dominant and a posterior dominant. Then we're working on a weakness and we're hitting conditioning, okay? The first day of the week, we're working on power, 10 sets of three for 30 total reps, 10 sets of three, okay? Day two, five by five, that's 25 total reps. And then day three is two by 20. So you're gonna do two sets of 20 reps as fast as you can. Obviously, the third day, you're not gonna be able to do that much weight, but the idea is to burn you out and work on conditioning. Okay? Muscular endurance. You can't just be able to do things for a couple reps at a time. You have to be able to burn it out as well. Okay? That's what being a face-off guy in a nutshell or any athlete is all about. So we've got our three days, total body, symmetry, and now we're working on three different set rep schemes. So now here's where the, the smart part of it rotates. You go through, say you did this in January. Okay? 
all of January, this is what you did for three weeks straight. That fourth week is what we call a deloading phase. So I would always take the fourth week of every month and I would make it some kind of deload. So I would say, you know, if we had that extra week, I would say, we're gonna do all these exercises, but we're gonna grease the groove. We're gonna work on three sets of five for each, make sure our technique is perfect. Or you can take that week and say, you know what, I'm just gonna kinda do some cardio and flush my system out. Or, you know, this week I'm just gonna kinda focus just on my weaknesses. Maybe I just wanna work on rehab for my shoulder or I wanna work on stretching all week, whatever. Take that week, it doesn't have to be super strict, but I called it a deloading week. It's that week where we just kinda let the joints kinda chill. We don't lift heavy and we just kind of do whatever we need to do to feel right for the next part of our cycle. So all of January, we do it this way. Then February, we rotate. So this second row, we're doing the same exercises, but now we change day one to five by five. Day two is now our two by 20. Day three is our 10 by three. So after we gained a ton of power and we put up really big numbers here, now we're gonna flip it. We're gonna drop some numbers, we're gonna go five by five, and we're gonna do a little bit more of an extended set. So we go three to five. Here was our strength day. Now we're gonna do RDLs for high volume. You're gonna find that when you do high volume and you also do heavy loads in the same week and you're working similar muscle, uh, muscle groups. So for instance, if you're doing a deadlift for 10 by three, but you're also doing a RDL, okay, by five by five and a glute hand by two by 20, that's three days of hitting your hamstrings and glutes. One day is a lot of volume. The other day is a ton of load. You're going to find that you're going to gain weight pretty quick. Muscle density. You're gonna, your muscles are going to feel really solid after this first month. Trust me. Okay. So now in month two, all we did was we kept the same exercises and we rotate the set rep schemes. And then we have a deload week. And then in month three, which is March, now this is 2 by 20, 10 by 3, 5 by 5. So we have just gone through three months. That's 12 weeks of training. And we kept the same rep, same exercises, but we rotated the set rep schemes. So you've done total body for four, for I'm sorry, 12 straight weeks with different set rep loads. So your body was able, basically in that first month, by the third week of you doing back squat 10 by three, your body's starting to adapt and it's starting to jump up in weight and starting to hit its limit. Then all of a sudden you hit your deload, your body rests. And then the second month, now you're going, okay, now I'm going five by five. So I'm doing a little bit less weight, but now it's more volume. Your body adapts over the course of a month and then you switch things. So now we're getting the best of both worlds. We're not just rotating for the sake of rotating exercises and tricking the body every week. We're also not doing the same thing so long that our body adapts and we don't actually get a chance to, we hit a plateau and we don't get a chance to reach our total amount of gains. So this is three months. Now, what do we do for the, for the second MESA cycle, right? Okay, so now we're gonna start in April. What do we do? Well, then, you take this idea and you rotate your exercises. So maybe you say, you know what? I did, I did back squat January, February, March. Now I'm going to switch it to front squat. Um, you know, I did uh, barbell deadlift. Maybe now I'm going to switch it to a trap bar. I did bench press with a, um, I did bench press with a barbell. Now I'm going to do it with dumbbells. So now you take the exercises and all you do is you just alter them a little bit. Okay. I did goblet squat. Maybe now I'm gonna do jump squats with a weighted vest, okay? Uh, my RDLs, maybe I'll switch over to a dumbbell. So you can change a slight tweak to all these exercises after three months, and next thing you know, you come in, everything's the same base, but it feels like a totally new, fresh program, and then you can work on it from there. So then you do the exact same thing all over again. You change your exercises, and now starting in the second mesa cycle, you go back to 10 by three, and five by five, and two by 20. And you do that, the first, second, and third message cycle. And next thing you know, it's going to be the, the winter. It'll be October. You're going into your final message cycle. And you can start training for whatever. You can take a look back at how you were in January. Always keep track of your weights. Now, how do we progress? That's really up to you. But um, I like to progress by keeping the same load the entire day. So I've always told my clients, in the first message cycle, the first week, start really light. If you think you can do a back squat for five reps for 135 pounds, then just start with like 115. And then every week, put 10 on each side to go up by 20 pounds in your, in your lower body exercises and your upper body exercises go, go up by 10 pounds. Um, and that way you can progress. If you feel like it's so light that it's a joke, then obviously add weight. 
um, add more than that each week, but that is your basic idea. You can handle the weight. You would know what weight you can do better than I do because I don't know who's doing what, but this is how you want to set it up. Now, on top of this, you have bonus exercises. So obviously I can't tell everyone to do Olympic lifts because I think Olympic lifts are the most challenging thing to do in strength training. Um, there, this was my specialty um, when I was doing strength training. I do Olympic lifts, cleans, uh, snatches, and jerks all the time. Um, if you want to add this into your program, these are bonuses. Um, if you want to do, especially on the weekends. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday is our meat and potatoes. And then if you want to do something extra on Saturday or Sunday, then that's what I consider a bonus day. So if you want to do, if you're feeling really good, you want to do some cleans, go for it. If you want to work on some extra cardio, okay, you can do some sprint work. Or, you know, if you're a meathead and you want to go out to the club, you can wear a V-neck and do gun shop. It's totally your call. Um, but those are your, basically, this is how you're going to set it up, okay? Start with your exercises, your favorite ones. Do some research. Make sure you can do them correctly. Put them in this style right here. Then write out your Monday, Tuesday, your Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then just start plugging and playing and add everything in. And next thing you know, you have your set rep schemes, you have your exercises, and now you've got yourself your first mess of cycle that you can build an entire year off of. Okay? Um, that's what I do. Okay, and now if you're a face-off guy and you're being told that you need to buy some kind of grip strength thing, um, that person's an idiot. But uh, you can feel free if you wanna work on your forearms. My forearms were built by doing Olympic lifts, by picking up heavy things. Nothing's gonna force you to work your grip strength more than just picking up a heavy load, all right? Um, so if you wanna gain strength in your forearms, don't sit there and do this stuff. It doesn't do anything, okay? It might burn a little bit, but grip strength starts here. And if I'm sitting here doing this, I'm not interacting with my fingers, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna hold stuff. You can carry um, a dumbbell, a very heavy dumbbell, okay? We call it a suitcase carry. Carry it on one side, walk down the road, um, and then flip and go to the other arm, okay? Anytime you have an anterior, uh, a, a asymmetrical load, it's gonna work this side really hard to pull you back. Um, you can also just do cleans, you can do deadlifts. You're gonna feel your forearms build throughout this program because you're gonna be doing so much hip hinging motions that in which you have to hold a weight. Um, so that's my recommendation when it comes to forearm training, all right? It's not something that you should be sitting there with some kind of stupid device doing this all the time. Uh, it makes you one semester. You also have to remember, that you have extensors as well. So these muscles have to be worked, just like these muscles have to be worked, okay? So if you just do this all the time, all you're gonna do is end up with some kind of wrist impingement. So you wanna work both sides. Um, one thing that I like a lot uh, that you could probably do at home, which is why you're watching TV, is you take a, uh, a no-bounce hammer, okay, a rubber mallet, um, take like a bunch of duct tape to the top just to make it really um, heavy on the, on the end, and while you're watching TV, you can do supination pronation back and forth like this, if that makes you feel better. Um, supination pronation works these muscles all the way across your forearm, back and forth. Um, so those are some little things that you can do. But this is the entire program. That's what we're talking about. That's your entire macro cycle. If you have questions, go ahead and throw them at the bottom. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, and good luck. I think this is fun. Uh, as far as the nutrition part goes, everyone who's telling me that you can't gain weight, it's because you're not eating enough. It has nothing to do with supplements. Eat. All right, I used to think I ate a ton in high school and I couldn't gain weight. Then I got to Penn State and they told me to write everything I wrote down, everything I ate down. And then they gave me a 10,000 calorie a day diet. Turns out I was eating less than 2,000 calories a day even though I thought I was eating so much, okay? 10,000 calories is a full job. Two breakfasts, two lunches, two dinners, chocolate milk and orange juice with everything, squirting honey, a bottle of honey in my mouth while I'm at class, grossing people out of Penn State. All right, so you have no idea how much you're eating. Take a calorie count throughout a day, and if you're not eating around four to 5,000 calories and you're an ectomorph, which means it's hard for you to put on weight, you're not eating nearly enough. Um, carbs, stop eating 18 eggs a day. There's not nearly enough calories in there. Drink chocolate milk, drink whole milk, and eat a lot of carbohydrates. <clears throat> Go to Chipotle, get a bowl, crush it, eat burritos, all that fun stuff, okay? All right, I'm done rambling. Have a good one, guys.